Hello everyone and welcome to this week's garden tour. We're going to start at the plot garden today. This is how the plot's looking at this moment. And we'll first take a look at this cage here and all of the tomatoes. So my partner decided to build this cage here to help us a little bit with our squirrel problem. So those are just pipes with connectors and some deer netting or bird netting tied by zip ties. And they mostly have vegetables in here alongside with a few zinnias. But the plan is to try to protect our vegetables as much as we can because the squirrels tend to eat them all summer long. But most of the garden here is flowers. And I'm going to try to plant a few things before I go on my trip. We're leaving for a month in July and we'll probably be focusing on growing more vegetables when we come back since we're not going to be here for a long time. But let's look at what we have growing right now here. This cage, Danny just put a little pipe in the netting like loose on the edge so we can easily lift it up. Sometimes happens what just happened right now. It gets a little stuck on the side on these little hoops. So just lift this up to get in. And then you can see the tomatoes in here are doing really well. I added more cages. They are growing very nicely. I haven't fertilized or even watered them much lately. I should have spent more time taking care of them this year, but I'm kind of enjoying to see how they grow just on their own. I usually like to take the suckers out and try to train them to grow to one stem but this year i'm thinking that i might just let them go wild and use these cages for a little bit and we can see what we can do when we come back from vacation it could be a bad idea but it's something that i've been really kind of driving towards too i also need to do some weeding on this side here you can see there's lots of weeds growing together with those tomatoes you see how beautiful and healthy these ones here in the back are looking and i have these three here they are not so there are three different varieties this one is the shiriki purple which is one of my favorites so i'm a little sad to see there's not doing well that's a berkeley tie-dye green and i'm not sure what's that one i can read the little tag but they're all different so there's no reason for them to be struggling the same way on the same place other than because they are in the same place. So I think there's some watering kind of issue in here. You see our soil is not very great here either. I would like to try to cover a little bit more. I bring some mulch because after we took out the greens that were growing here, it's looking very bare. What I really think is happening is maybe there's a watering issue right on this area. Looks like to me, I'm not sure if you can see the camera, it's sort of sloped. So I'm not sure if they're getting overwatered and the roots are kind of getting drowned because their leaves are getting yellow. They're looking very weak and they're all planted, seeded, transplanted all on the same day. Everyone else in here, so it doesn't make any sense that those three only are doing bad. So I'm really thinking it's something with the watering here, but I'm also considering to not keep them because we're trying to downsize with our vegetables this year too. We got a little overwhelmed with the harvest last year and trying to figure out what's the good balance for us. So since all of these other tomatoes are doing beautiful over here, I am considering to maybe take these ones out and plant something else in here. I wanted to maybe plant some peppers. I didn't start in from seed, but I'm gonna see if there's still any available at the farmer's market. Or I was even considering to do some squash in here because we now have this netting. We didn't wanna do squash before because we have lots of vine borers and we barely get any fruit and it take a lot of space. But with this, maybe we can put a couple summer squashes in here and see how they go. So we're gonna think about it, but I wanted to show you guys how things are going here. I normally would have pruned these tomatoes by now, but I didn't, as I mentioned. But I've been coming here and I've been pollinating them, the flowers, because I'm, I've seen a couple of bees in here, but I don't think they really come into this area very much. The bumblebees are bigger. The smaller ones can come in, in and out, no problem. But still, I like to have insurance and I will just shake them or just with my hands try to hand pollinate them. There's a bee right there outside. They love this hairy veg. There's lots of bees and all the hairy veg that I'm growing. But anyway, this is the overall tomato look, which I am very happy about. That side also lifts, so it's easy for me to go from that side and try to hand pollinate everyone in there. The kale in here is doing really good. That a companion planted with the tomato. Same with the basil. They're starting to grow and look nice. We gotta come here and pinch them. I'm not gonna do it right now because I didn't bring a basket. But I will pinch their tops to encourage them to grow a little bit bushier. This bed is looking a lot better than that because I tried to... Sorry, then this one over here is too fast. 
because I purposely tried to plant lots of basil in between to sort of protect the soil and I think I really like that and since the basil doesn't take a lot of energy I don't think they're competing with the tomatoes very much so I think that was a good move and I'm excited to see how it's gonna keep doing through the season and I have some zinnias in here that I've pinched and uh, oh there's some buds this was the Benary giant mix and I don't know what colors they're gonna turn out to be. I'll let that one bloom, so let's close this now, for now. This is soup, not super sturdy. Yes, maybe some other rodents can still get in here because it's not metal, but we're trying our best at least to make it a little bit harder for them to get to that's those vegetables in there. Now outside here, I am so happy with this white dill. So this is a cut flower variety. Originally, I wanted to have this blooming for my wedding in July, which some of these flowers here are for But I'm not sure if they're cutting come again. I have to research. They're all blooming now So I don't know how they're gonna be looking for weeks, but I will harvest them I'll see if they are coming cut again. I'll harvest most of them to see if I can encourage a second flush It's kind of getting in the way of the garden too. It's flopping over So I do have to come and cut and I want to make a bouquet of only this all of this airy beautiful blooms behind there We have some poppies and I have some more poppies here in this back. They're all setting pods And some of them are cracking. There's one in my backyard that's open So I'll show that to you guys, but it's exciting to see and I have some cosmos in here that I'm really 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 happy About it. These are three plants all together and look how pretty they all look airy and flowy and bringing some color to this little gray area I really like it I think I like the red better than this apricota one I usually tend to get more drawn to colors like this but in this area specifically I'm really really enjoying that red so happy that that's blooming nicely there okay moving on to here Look at this calendula. It's just so beautiful. I said a variety every garden tour, but I think it's worth mentioning. This is called Orange Button, and they are so much bigger and more double than the regular calendula. See, there's a bee right in there. They bees love them. You can use this as a cut flower, and they also have medicinal properties. They're very good for your skin. So I like to dry those too. And those are beautiful. They're ready to be harvested. I usually, I guess, for cut flowers, you should harvest them when they have open, but I We'll harvest all of them for drying this week too. And then that way they will just keep producing some more. The root back here, check this out, it's almost opening. I'm so excited. Just, I thought it would, could be open by this garden tour, but it's not. Maybe next week. This is a Sahara root back here, and I'm very excited to see what color this one's going to be. The borage, it's flowering there too. There was a volunteer from last year. I didn't plant it, it's just self-seeded in there. And borage is like a bee magnet. There's always tons of bees on it and it's also edible. We like to harvest some and add to some salads or drinks. It has a cucumber like this, so it's really good. Here's the straw flowers just harvested. I'm gonna come to this side so my shadow is not in the way. And there, some side buds are coming. This one that's ready to be harvested again. Woo, that's tons of bees today in the garden. That's good. This early, it's a little warmer. So they're coming out early, which is really good. It's another one here. And I hope this is gonna give another flush in four weeks because they look so beautiful fresh with the greenery. I'm planning to dry them, but they look very nice with their greens too. And here, look at that. The poppy here, it's about to bloom, probably tomorrow, maybe even by the end of the day today. This is a black peony poppy. I'm so excited to see how it looks. It looks fully double. The one that I have on my backyard looks like a single. I'll show you guys that when we move on to that. And this is another poppy in here that's taller and straighter. But it is cracking, I thought it was a bug. But <laughs> guys, there's a little, someone beat into it. And now there's some leaves coming out of the little hole. Let's move to this side here now. We have this clacchia here, adding some nice colors. Bees also love the clacchia. They also love the veg. So they've been really happy with this year. Lots of flowers in the, flowers in the garden. So there's another one here in the veg. There's always bees on this hairy veg. I planted this to be a cover crop but I noticed that it was starting to climb. So I, I just put it on the side over the fence and it started climbing over the fence and the bees are just really enjoying that. And check out the sweet peas. Remember that I, I just harvested a bunch of them and they are just bloomed again. Doesn't even look like I harvested anything. It's really incredible. Gotta come and harvest again a little later today. And I have another Dahlia bloom here. This is a Dahlia bed, one of them. 
And look at this. This one was in a mix. I did some research and I think it's called Crazy Legs, but you guys can help me identify it. I bought a mix of dahlias. They're supposed to have strawberry colors, but they didn't come labeled. So there's just kind of a bunch of tubers and I have no idea what they are. So I would love to try to identify them to label them if I want to save them for next year. And I have another one here that's almost opening. This is going to be a Feline Ivone, I think that's how you pronounce. But it's not open yet, probably another day. Some of them are budding nicely. So, very exciting, very excited for dahlias. I absolutely love the way they look. And the ones on this side here are still a little behind because I planted them here straight from tubers, just put the tubers in the ground here. And these ones I pre-sprouted, that's why they are a little bit ahead. So I also have some sunflowers in here, how I mentioned in the previous garden tours. They're growing way too fast. I didn't think they would outgrow the dahlias so much, so I'm now a little worried that this guy's going to be shaded by them. But they're here now, I'm going to let them grow. The calendula here is also looking very nice. Oh, I have a tomato. Huh, I didn't even... Look at that. This is the black strawberry tomato. I have one. I planted these tomatoes in here, overcrowded, so... Not sure how they're going to do, but I'm happy to see that one is already producing. Okay, let's move on to the back now. I have the zinnias here. Very excited for the zinnias. Very weedy. Oh my god, I gotta come here and weed. I didn't spend a lot of time in the garden this week because we had the smoke from Canada and the air quality was really bad, but I have to catch up next week. I will come here and do a lot of weeding to give these dahlias a better chance of growing nice and healthy, but they're looking pretty good. I'm very impressed on the way they're looking since they had a little bit of a rough start. Some of them were really leggy and I had to repot them, but they're looking pretty good. I cannot even tell which ones were the ones that I planted first and last, so that's a good sign. Here are sunflower steves, sunflower. Look how interesting what's happening here. It's like a wave. <laughs> These ones are in the middle and not growing as much. Those are a little bit faster and these are kind of in the middle. Those guys are not sunflower steves, sorry, I have a different sunflowers in here. From here on, it's sunflower steves. And I'm a little worried because some of them are very small back here. I planted them all at the same time and I thought they would grow at the same time, but the sun comes this way and then it looks like the ones in the front are going to shade the ones in the back. So I'm not sure if they are going to grow much there or not, but we'll see. Again, if I get a few blooms from this before mid-July, I'll be very happy about it already. We are nearing the end here on the plot. We have the snapdragons here on this side that I've been cutting a lot from. And this or two that I'm saving from seed. There are lots of seed pods forming. So the ones in the bottom are already forming. But I'm going to let this plant live its whole life. I'm going to let it dry out in there without me disturbing it. And I'm probably just going to harvest the dried seed pods when I come back from Brazil. More of the snapdragons are budding too, which is pretty good. They're very productive. I'm very impressed. I have so many snapdragons already. And this vernacular is here. Last thing, incredibly long. I think it's the third week these guys are in the garden tour. They are in the end of their life now. You can see the petals are not looking as nice, but they are also turning yellow. So it's getting a little bit too hot for them. That should be the end of the season for vernaculars. And I have the salmon clock in here. I originally wanted to cut this, to plant this, to cut too, for cut flowers and bouquets, but the bees, there's some in there too, absolutely love it. So I'm leaving this here for the bees and I think I'm going to do it on the landscape from now on. It's so pretty, just, you know, let it be. It's been flowering for a while and it's just looking really nice. It's obviously a lot. I don't need this many maybe and I can put more towards the back so it doesn't fall over so much, but I am planning to keep planting these for the bees for sure. Hopefully I can also save some seeds from it or itself, seeds itself would be even better. Back here I have the yarrow. Oh, I'm gonna get color. I'm so excited. I was so scared that they were gonna be all white. This is the yarrow that I planted last year, never flowered. There was the Colorado yarrow. And then someone told me that usually the first, second year they just come white. So I was a little bit, you know, if it said if it will come only white it'll be okay but I prefer it to be colored and I can see some pink in here that's very nice and also what is, what's this gotta be careful here some sort of I don't know what, what could that be you guys can help me out just this 
this is like I don't know blight or what could this be this black stuff on it interesting I have to do some research on that I have some more cosmos in here and over there is just a mess I need to go clean that up because that area over there is the trash area for these buildings and then you know we're in New York City so where there's trash and food there's rats so I've been noticing that some rats are coming from there and going in here so I do not want to give them habitat here I'm going to cut all of these daily leaves everything's getting a little bit out of control there but we're gonna try to trim as much as we can so that they cannot hide their nest and you know have babies and stuff so we're gonna have to try to address that this week hopefully but definitely before we, we go to Brazil and then I also have to prune this grapevine here it's just too much it's coming all the way here and it's also shading some of the sunflowers during the day so I'm gonna cut them most of it that's branching out cut that outside and add all of this nice green stuff to the compost because the compost is really needing some more green all right so that was it for the plot now I'm going to take a walk back home and we're going to see how everything is looking in my backyard I love this little garden here and the cages they built for the squirrels are very nice okay so here's my little backyard things are not looking as nice as I wish actually because we're kind of in a transition phase of the garden and there's a lot of holes in it right now the last time with the snapdragons and when it had the vernaculars in here it was actually looking really nice but now we're sort of in this in-between stage the vernaculars in here are definitely done their leaves are all starting to yellow and they're starting to die out also the squirrels the squirrels have been digging here so hard I'm not sure if they're trying to look for the corms so I was waiting for the leaves to yellow a little bit more before I lift them to try to save for next year but now I'm a little worried that they're gonna be eaten so I'll think about it what I should do we have two beautiful poppies blooming in here this is the Iceland poppy there's another bud coming here and there's some more underneath here too which is impressive to me because I thought they were not gonna do very good in the heat but I have a feeling that they are in the end of their life so I'm not going to harvest them anymore I'm going now to let them just go to seed and make the seed pod and then I'll try to harvest seed from those to plant it next year because I love the color of this too and I have a couple neighbors that ask me it's like oh can you please save seed from those puppies I love to try to plant on my yard too so I will definitely do that so the dahlias back here are not really in their full potential yet they have started blooming I have harvested some this one is the Linda's baby that I showed in the last garden tour it's a new bud just growing here I harvested the other two that were in there to practice making a little flower arrangement and we have this gorgeous one here too that also came in a mix but I think it's called the Nikki from my research Dahlia is the same mix of that red that the other one that I said was called crazy legs is from so red yellow orange I don't know it's supposed to be I thought it would be more like this like strawberry color but I'm happy with this one it's very pretty can't really see with the shadow but I love the dark center very beautiful I'm leaving that one there just to try to make the garden a little prettier since now it's just looking green and a little sad here because of the ranunculus the fever field here has bloomed look at that but it was all flopping so I came in a little earlier this morning and just added a twine in here and hopefully with the Sun today she will align and try to get straight again we'll see we'll see if it goes but it was just falling over the ground here so I needed to tie it somehow and the sunflowers are so big look at this I love when they start passing the fence over there now it's just a wait game to see when they're going to flower those are our volunteers so they're all going to be a surprise and how they're going to look like and feverfew here is doing good and this side here actually I think that I might have to cut all of this white tea you guys saw how many I have in the plot I have some more here there's some more there I planted too many and I have some dahlias back here that I think are suffering because they're just getting shaded by these enormous guys so as much as I don't like to take healthy plants out of the garden I did take that big red dahlia there that I didn't like the color I mean I just cut it down I didn't take it fully but I cut it all the way to the bottom there so she can go a little bit slower and try to catch up with these other ones but I really think I need to take out this it's hard to cut them but I 
I think it needs to be done if I want my dahlias to thrive in the back. And the larkspur in here is flowering. So it's cute and so tall as well. But that one I think by itself with just a few of the bachelor buttons should be okay. I also harvest some bachelor buttons if you see the difference between last week. And I might actually harvest the rest and really give some more space and air and sun for those dahlias back there to start growing a little bit more. Fever few I'm not going to harvest because I'm waiting for them. This is a different variety. Oh, maybe I will have to harvest soon. They're about to open. This is a double variety that I never grew before. I'm so excited. I'll wait for them to fully open before I harvest them. So, but now we can see that's not going to be long. And this calendula in here, I said I was gonna harvest to dry. Well, I did harvest a bunch, but a lot more just open. So this is very exciting. I'm really, really loving this calendula. I love orange and having this bright color in the garden over here I think is really helping you make it a little bit nicer. We have this little Lysiantus gap in here, but guys, let me tell you, the Lysiantus is finally starting to pick up. I think it grew a lot more than last week already and it's looking nice, but again, this deal over here, this white deal, it's sort of shading it. So if I take this out, also I feel that the Lysiantus will have a better chance of thriving and lots of stuff back here on this little shady area there just drew some seeds in there my leftover plants and they're doing okay surprisingly and look at this <laughs> i have this very interesting poppy so it's supposed to be the same variety as the double that i showed you guys but the seed pot there looked like had a lot more petals so i think that's gonna be a double this one is just looking wild it's a little <laughs> i don't know i like it it's a little shaggy i don't know how to say it i loved coming here this morning and seeing it's like whoa look at this guy really big it almost looks like a sunflower is it feeling like that like it's facing the front like that and it's looking like it's gonna have a very nice seed pod so i'll probably let her go to seed and just harvest the seed pod when it's nice and green and that's it for this side for this area hopefully next week he'll be looking a lot different when i take that out and the dahlias will have a little bit more chance to grow and hopefully i also have a few more blooms so it doesn't look just so i like the green but it just doesn't look like as exciting as it was looking a few weeks ago this side here well i have a hard time with this side because i wanted to have lots of pots in here to cover that storage area that we have there but i just don't think it's looking good <laughs> looks a little messy i don't know it's not really speaking to my heart i love the flowers but i'm not sure if it's in a good combination i don't know but i'll try to see if i can make this look better a little bit i definitely have to cut those pieces they're just not gonna make it the ones that i thought could give us more they're just they did their job they're working now it's time to cycle them out but these other ones here are looking good they're producing more also i harvested some last week and there's a bunch more which i'm very happy about they're very good very tasty nice and sweet still and i have more lax spur in here very excited about this lax spur it's very pretty i will i did not know these things would get as tall as it got so it was a great learning lesson for me and I'll try to just arrange them in a better way next year. I also didn't know when they're going to bloom. This was all an experiment this year. Good experiment, it worked, but good for me for my awareness to know, to plan a little better next year too. The forget-me-not, Chinese forget-me-not, mystery rose is also blooming. I think I have to harvest this now already. I don't know, gotta do some more reading. So I clearly planted a lot of things and they all bloom at once now. And I kind of forgot on their seed packs their requirements, when they need to be cut, when it should, you know, is the best time for them to be harvested. And I need to go, really go back and start looking to eat everything now because they're just all coming at the same time. Okay, before we go to the green stalk, check out this eucalyptus. I don't really like that it's in a bucket like this, but it is what it is, that's what I had in this white bucket. But look at this. It's so big. I love it. It smells so good every time we like rub pass by it. It smells amazing. So, it's really good. I'm excited about it. I gotta take this out. Here was a time that I thought it would come back and never came back. So, I'm just gonna take it out as well. Here on this side, we have a couple of tomatoes that I had extra and I planted in a bucket. They're doing good. Gotta pollinate them. And my carrots went to seed. So, no carrots for me again this year. I don't know. This one didn't, but I don't think it's gonna be any big or not. So, I had a really good carrot year in 2021, but last year and this year, no carrots for me. 
Here I have some beans that I sold together with this ginger pot. I thought the pot was too big for the ginger, so I wanted to use a little bit more. And I put an extra tomato in there. This is an early tomato that's the New Yorker. So it's already producing a couple in there. Green stock here looking very nice with the supports. Okay, it's starting to get very nice and full. And the broccoli is already giving us some more side shoots, which is really good. I'm gonna, I could harvest again, but I'm not. Not today, not in a couple days I will get some more. And the beans are looking good over here too, growing nicely. The tomatoes here on this green stalk are starting to turn color. So once they start getting like this, very shiny and yellowish, it means that they will turn quite fast. So hopefully we have some tomatoes soon. I love them, they look so nice. <laughs> Tiny little plants, but they look really good in the green stalk, I think. The lavender is could harvest some more again, but it's looking good there. And the thyme is also looking good on that side. Oh, I think I have a, yeah, there's a radish here that I keep forgetting to harvest. So, oops, it's probably a lot damaged. Oh, I'll do that, take care of everything after I finish here. So there's only one more thing here in the backyard that we have to look to. We have a couple of plants in here, a couple of flowers and the basil. It's actually, I'm excited about starting to fill up. We're gonna start harvesting to cook with it very soon. This planter here is just not doing great, so I'm gonna also cut this plant down. I'll keep the mint, but I'll probably put some beans or something else in here. It's time to start cycling things out, you know, in the garden. So tell the yellow is looking there. We wanna make it look nice and healthy again, so we I will work in doing these transitional things this week. So green stock, oh, gotta harvest this lettuce. So much lettuce. Not complaining, but we already I harvested more this week. This one's going to seed, so I'm gonna harvest the whole thing. Everyone's going to seed, I just keep curling them, cutting them in the bottom, and harvesting more. But the Swiss chard, look, finally looking nice. Not too much more leaf miner, maybe it's just a season. And they're looking pretty good. Oh, there's some here. I mean, spoke too early, too soon. But much better than before, I'll be able to harvest some more from there, which is good. My nasturtium. It's full of flowers, but it's also telling me this green stalk needs to be fertilized. You see how this little, the plants, the leaves are very small and the flowers are big? That usually happens when their soil is a little bit in need of nutrition, a fertilizer. I think the same thing is happening to the pansies. But because I have like mostly lettuce and stuff in here, they're still doing well. But if I want to plant some beans or some fruiting things that require more food, <laughs> I would have to fertilize it again. It's just good to keep a fertilizing schedule in general for the green stalks. I have to be 100% honest with you and I'm very bad at it. I forget all the time. So my green stalks tend to look very good in the beginning when I amend the soil. And sometimes in between the season they'll start dying down because I am not taking care of them like I should, you know, I'm meaning to like put in my calendar to start getting to like every Friday do a fertilizing, so eventually I'll get there. But some of them are growing, some of the bases are starting to grow nicely, but I would like to give this plant some more food so they can start filling this up nicely again. Here's my sweet pea experiment for saving seed. Some of the pods are starting to dry. Same thing as the Snapdragon I said in the pot. I'll let this plant just die on its own, get it all dried out and brown before I take this out. So I'm kind of sacrificing this trellis in here. But I have some things growing in the bottom. <laughs> this is a little messy here, things fall off. But I have some oregano, some basil, fennel, and some pansies. I'll leave this over here until we travel. When we come back, it should be all nice and dry. And then when we are back home, I'll plant something else in here to use this trellis again. I almost forgot something very important, guys. My peas, my snap peas, they're ready to be harvested. I'm not gonna harvest now in this video, but I will do it for dinner tonight. And they have just kind of bent over. They got too big. Let me show you what happened here. That's why I can't really see it. They got too big and heavy with this beautiful piece and they'll just bent. So, see, if I let it go, it falls kind of hardly. I'm gonna harvest them tonight for dinner and probably keep this plant in here. It's starting to get yellow in the bottom, but it's a lot healthier than this guy and this guy. So, this one might stay. And that's it for the garden tour today. If you missed the one from last week, I'll link a video over here so you can watch the next if you're curious. I'd love to hear how your gardens are doing by the time of the year where you are too. So please put that in the comment section below if you like. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.